the flame of a candle, the inferno of a blazing forest. flames of an open hearth furnace in a steel mill. All are examples of combustion. Ordinary combustion requires fuel, air, and sufficiently high temperature to reach the kindling point of the fuel. These three factors make up the well-known fire triangle. Oxygen is the part of air used in combustion. Ordinary combustion uses oxygen as the oxidizer, which combines with the fuel. Combustion is a common, everyday, visible example of a chemical change. This experiment shows heated copper burning in oxygen to form cupric oxide. In combustion, other elements such as chlorine, and sulfur vapor can be used as the oxidizer in place of oxygen. For example, heated copper combines with chlorine to form cupric chloride. Chlorine is the oxidizer. Similar combustion takes place when heated copper combines with sulfur vapor to form cuprous sulfide. Thus we see that combustion may be more vigorous with certain oxidizers such as chlorine and sulfur vapor than with oxygen itself. This experiment will show that combustion is possible only when all three parts of the fire triangle are present. Phosphorus underwater in the test tube is the fuel. When the temperature is raised, the phosphorus melts. Although the fuel is hot enough to burn in air, it cannot burn because the water shuts out the oxidizer. Thus only two parts of the fire triangle are present and combustion does not take place. When oxygen, the oxidizer, is bubbled in, the triangle is complete and phosphorus burns, even under water. Next kindling temperature will be examined. The heat supply from a Bunsen burner is above the kindling temperature of a steel nail, but the steel nail dissipates the heat energy of the flame so fast by conduction and radiation that the heat from the flame cannot raise the metal to its kindling temperature and the steel nail does not ignite. Steel wool does not conduct heat as readily as the steel nail. The heat supply of the Bunsen burner is enough to make the steel wool reach its kindling temperature and ignite. An oxyacetylene flame supplies enough heat and at a high enough temperature to make a steel lag screw reach its kindling temperature. Sparks show that the surface of the metal actually ignites and burns. Combustion may take place at different rates. A charcoal fire represents a slow rate of combustion. When metal wire burns an oxygen within a flash bulb, rapid combustion takes place. There are five factors controlling the rate of combustion. One, type of fuel. As an example, a flame that will not ignite kerosene causes gasoline to ignite immediately and burn. Two, temperature. The hotter the charcoal, the faster it burns. In general, a 10 degree rise in temperature doubles the rate of combustion. Three, nature of oxidizer. As already shown, heated copper burns faster in chlorine than in oxygen.
Four, concentration of the reacting substances. Steel wool burns slowly in air. It burns rapidly in pure oxygen because the oxidizer is more concentrated. The fifth factor affecting the rate of combustion is the extent to which fuel and oxidizer are mixed. Wheat flour in a pile burns slowly because only the surface area of the flour pile can mix with the oxygen in the air. When flour is dispersed in air as a dust, each particle of the flour is surrounded by the oxygen in the air, and combustion takes place at a rapid rate. This apparatus demonstrates that when wheat flour is spread into the air and exposed to a spark or a flame in a confined space, combustion is so rapid that an explosion results. <coughs> Now, combustion started by spontaneous ignition will be demonstrated. Rags soaked in linseed oil are used as an example of a fuel which can ignite spontaneously without an external source of heat. The slow oxidation of the oil within the rag mass generates enough heat to raise the oil, which is the fuel, to its kindling temperature and combustion starts by spontaneous ignition. In this example of spontaneous ignition, paper is soaked with a solution of phosphorus in carbon disulfide. The carbon disulfide evaporates, leaving the finely divided phosphorus particles exposed to air. Phosphorus, as the fuel, combines slowly with air, the oxidizer, and sufficient heat is generated for the phosphorus to reach its kindling point and combustion starts by spontaneous ignition. Now, combustion characteristics will be demonstrated. A glow is characteristic in the combustion of charcoal. A flame is characteristic in the combustion of gaseous substances. For example, methane burns with a flame. As found in natural gas, methane is widely used as a fuel. A flame is characteristic of the burning of gases from a liquid fuel. When gasoline burns in an open dish, it is actually the vapors above the dish that are flaming. All liquid fuels do not burn until they become hot enough to vaporize. Then the vapors burn with a flame. Certain solids also burn with a flaming vapor. When phosphorus burns in air, the heat from its combustion liquefies the element, and then it forms a vapor. The vapor of phosphorus burns with a flame. Next, the phosphorus is placed in a flask of oxygen. Using oxygen instead of air increases the concentration of the oxidizer, which in turn raises the temperature of the phosphorus and increases the rate of combustion. The white smoke that is produced is solid phosphorus pentoxide. The solid material wood decomposes chemically when heated to release gases which are different in composition from the wood itself. These gases burn with a flame. Next, extent of combustion will be examined. Combustion of a fuel can be complete or partial. As an example of complete combustion, carbon disulfide burns to form gaseous carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Partial combustion results when the flame is chilled by a piece of glass. Unburned sulfur is deposited on the glass, and invisible carbon dioxide escapes. The burning of gasoline in a blowtorch is an example of complete combustion, which produces steam and carbon dioxide.
Partial combustion takes place when gasoline is burned in a glass container and the flame is chilled by the edges of the container. Steam is formed and carbon deposits remain. In general, combustion has three results. First, new chemical substances are formed. For example, gasoline, composed of carbon and hydrogen, burns to form carbon dioxide and steam. Second, light energy is produced. Some gases release but little light in combustion. For example, hydrogen, burning in air, produces little light. A Bunsen flame that releases little light produces much light when particles are added to the flame. Heat from the flame causes the small solid particles to glow and then the flame becomes luminous or light giving. Third, combustion produces heat energy. For example, burning acetylene gas with oxygen generates intense heat. When the oxyacetylene flame raises the temperature of the metal in a steel plate to its kindling temperature, a supplementary stream of oxygen is turned on in the torch. Increasing the concentration of the oxidizer causes the steel to become the fuel in combustion and the flame cuts a path through the metal. Measurement of heat. A calorimeter is used to measure heat energy. A weighed amount of fuel is burned within the calorimeter and the temperature rise of a weighed amount of water is observed. The heat liberated is measured in units called calories. One calorie of heat is the quantity of heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree centigrade. Combustion plays many important roles in industrial uses. For example, coke ovens use heat from burning gases to convert coal to coke. The combustion of coal, gas and oil is the source of heat energy which produces most of the vast supply of electric energy used. Combustion produces the thrust that drives jet planes. To meet the challenge of the space age, we must know more about combustion. More efficient fuels will have to be developed for rockets and missiles. New materials of construction will have to be produced to withstand the higher and higher temperatures which are involved in space travel. Though science has learned a good deal about combustion, much about the familiar flame still remains a mystery. The continued study of combustion, therefore, is worthy of the dedicated labors of some of the finest scientific minds of today and tomorrow. <laughs>